Okay, good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining and a welcome from the DECT Forum to this second webinar in the series that we're running during this year about the new wireless technology DECT and R+. My name is Roel Otting and I'm responsible for business development at the DECT Forum and I will be the moderator for this webinar today. Before we get started, I'd like to say that we're very pleased to see such a high number of participants again today for this second webinar. That's very nice to see. Um, today we will have three speakers. Um, Yussi Numinen from uh, company Wirepass, Christian Satter from Nordic Semiconductor and Dr. Andreas Wildsek from Sennheiser. Uh, and I will allow, um, hand over to them to introduce themselves to you. Yussi. So thanks, thanks, Roy. So yes, my name is Jussi I've been working in, in Wirepass since 2015 and, and I have a background for, for the telecommunication and standards close to 30 years. And I'll be working in, in TCDECT as a TC, TCDECT Vice Chair. Thank you, Jussi. And then over to Christian. Yeah, hi, my name is Christian Satter. I am uh, the product director responsible for Cellular IT and Dectanar Plus radio technologies from a product level in Nordic Semiconductor. Been in Nordic for three years and have uh, roughly 20 years behind me in various roles across technology, product, marketing, and semiconductor. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. And then over to Andreas. So, hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Wilczek. I'm Head of Spectrum Policy and Standards at Sennheiser. I'm also TCDEC Vice Chairman uh, with special focus to the audio and ultra reliable low latency use cases. And uh, I have been active in the wireless industry for a while, uh, including wireless automation as well as the wireless audio world. Okay, thank you, Andreas. Okay, some notes then, uh, just like last time. Um, so the presentations will around, take around 30 minutes. If you have questions, then you can use the questions button, which you should see at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, we will answer the questions uh, after the presentations then, uh, and expect to take another 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll break all, up the meeting. And uh, if there are too many questions, um, then we will answer them after the webinar. Uh, I'd also like to draw your attention to the FAQ page that we've created on the DECT Forum website, uh, where we post all the frequently asked questions. This webinar will be recorded and made available to all who have registered. And just to uh, reiterate the purpose that we have with these webinars, um, so we want to convey as much information as possible about the new uh, standard to as many people as possible and um, the structure we've decided on is to to start at the applications and, and use cases which will be the topic for the webinar today uh, and then also to connect those to you know the features and benefits of this new wireless technology and to explain why this wireless technology is so suited to support those applications and then after the summer, we'll have two more uh, webinar sessions uh, focusing entirely on technology. Uh, and then we'll explain how we achieve these features and benefits. Okay. So today we will talk about some of the key initial applications for the technology. And they are smart metering and smart grid, uh, building management, uh, both topics will be presented by UC, and then industrial IoT will be presented by Christian, uh, and then Andreas will talk about professional audio and PMSE. And with that, I hand over to UC. Thanks, Ralph. So let's start with this uh, smart grid and, and, and smart metering uh, use cases and applications. I guess all of us are in, uh, in very well aware of that the, the electricity grid is transforming to the decarbonization. We have a we have a, a lot of, of ongoing on, on electrifying and, and get rid of the fossil fuels. And this is now illustrated on this picture, which which is an excellent report for, for World Economic Forum regarding the, the future electricity systems. 
and it's it's basically it combines the or, or con consists of of three different elements like electrification and, and decentralization which basically means that in the future the energy production is is more de decentralized than than it used to be and then what is combining these things is basically the digitalization that how the how the uh, the consumers and and production information can be can be uh, handled in real time and and in in an open manner and key technologies for this digitalization is, is like the smart meters and remote control systems sensors and all those things which are impacting on the energy production and, and consumption and, and understanding how this how these are, are, are working together then on the on the continuing with the smart metering and smart grid a uh, few few uh, issues which we, which we believe is is very important for the for the smart grid operational objectives for the for the electricity distribution systems and transmission systems one of them is is, is the really the seamless integration of the renewable energy production into the system and we all probably know that that this is this is causing or introducing a, a new type of requirements for the understanding the load and, and and production status of the system and this integration must be affordable it needs to be reliable and accessible for everyone who, who attends and and from this perspective this deck and new radio is uh, affordability aspect is is that that we can have an access for this uh, is 1.9 gigahertz spectrum which is which is open and 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 the cost of the deployment for the for the smart grid system or smart smart metering system is 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 low and and the operational cost also is and, and the maintenance is low thanks to the, the the autonomous operation of the system and last but not least for the affordability is, is the business sovereignty for the for the for the grid operators and 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 and, uh, and the smart metering utilities Regarding the reliability aspect, the, the state of art radio design, what we have on, on new radio, which is based on the on the on the known best known technologies, is is, is proving proving that part. And the other aspect is on the on the live network operation, which is autonomous. And this is basically enabling us to, to build a large networks and and, and enabling a, a reliable coverage for, for the mesh based on mesh topology. The accessibility part for the for the new radio uh, for for these use cases is basically that anyone can uh, participate on this energy and, and flexibility mark market thanks to the, to the the access on the on the spectrum, and the electricity operator can op obtain the real time uh, status for the local consumption and production, which is which is now on this new energy production mode is, is even more important than than, than uh, in a, in the past. So the, the electric, electricity or energy transition is possi possible with the proven and reliable data for the energy generation and, and, and consumption. This is, this is the, the essential part. And, and we, we see that this advanced metering infrastructure, which is basically visible on the picture, is, is providing the essential data connection for this one. And, and for this perspective, the, the DECTANA Plus is unlocking the, the potential future smart metering deployments which are, are, are really suitable for, for the new, new energy production uh, generation. Then going a bit more detail on the smart metering and, and, and what, we, what we see on this market, uh, the, the smart metering market is probably one of the largest IoT, industrial IoT use case seen so far. So we have more than 1.2 billion installed meter base globally today. And it is estimated that we will have another 1.6 billion new or replacement meters installed during the by the end of the 2030. There has been a multiple technologies for for these these uh, use use so far. There is a PLC, Bison, and, and other technologies, and we see that now now the the Deck Under Plus is uh, is pro providing a, a next generation performance step for the for the meter requirements, what we see in the future, and as well as overcoming the, the economical obstacles for the, for the which have been experienced on the, on the field. So in details, the 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 deck under plus smart metering case, the the benefits what we see for the for this technology is that, the technology is providing a, a state of art performance. It is it is designed to operate as a decentralized manner. 
and I'm providing an autonomous operation with mesh topology. And this is very important to, to provide the required SLA for the, for the metering, metering operation. We can use the 1.9 gigahertz spectrum and it's designed uh, and the system is designed for the shared spectrum operation on, on a reliable manner. And, uh, and the technology on, on based on the tech new, new radios is able to support million, actually up to the 4 billion devices in one network, which is enabling a, a very large uh, energy, energy systems in the future. On the governance point of view, the smart metering uh, operator uh, or utility uh, and is, is having a full control of the communication layer. That basically means that he can, he can um, uh, deploy those meters based on the use cases and requirements of the consumers. And then the next NR plus standard is providing the interoperability for the communication layer, thanks to the open standard. And the, the application domain, the, the DLMS interworking is, is for the DECT NR plus is underway. And that is providing the, the reliability and, 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 and the governance for the, for the application level for, for this type of use case. And the, the last one is, of course, this again, this spectrum access the easiness for the, for, for the unlicensed spectrum, but also the possibility to use the licensed spectrum in the future. And the, the last point is basically the total cost of the ownership of the lifetime is, is something that is very important that, that the network maintenance and management cost is, is reasonably low. And, and, and one, one very important and on our perspective is that all devices on the system are, are actually the same or similar, which is simplifying the, the design and testing and, and actually development of the, of the final products for the, for the use. And the equipment certification is, is, is simpler and, and, and simple on, on, on this perspective. Then I change to the, the other subject, which is the uh, building applications. And, and for the for this perspective or, or this this use case is the Dectana Plus is 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 well suited because the, the lightning system are, are requiring the low latency communication for the for their controls and, and and basically this is something that we can we can offer for the for the for the technology itself basically this is something that Andreas and Christian will 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 dive in more, more details. But on the same time, this lighting infrastructure is, is mains powered and it can basically provide a, a communication backbone of various different type of other devices which are used in the, inside the building for, for different purposes. It can support, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, a very large network. So basically, we, there is no limitation on that sense that well, how, how much equipment you can, you, you can deploy on the, on the same and single, single system. And it's providing them the, the reliability and, and simple network building and, and maintenance capabilities for the for the for these applications. And the capacity increase is straightforward since, since the autonomous routing, the, the adding more, more gateways to the system is basically very, very simple since the since the routing will be autonomous on the network level. We can collect data and manage the control of the devices. Uh, for the multiple applications with the same same infrastructure if if desired and here is the uh, example of some building applications there could be a, a and will be a use cases which are related on the security and emergency applications one example is the emergency lightning which is actually a, a, a regulated service and it's mandatory for the public buildings there could be a fire detection then on the advanced maintenance uh, area, there could be an environmental sensing, water management, heat management. You name what, what are the needs for the for the for the building on in, in the future. And then on the on the energy area, there is of course this ventilation and and this type of equipments and they they control and intelligent lighting, of course, is 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 something that can be can be for sure implemented on this on this technology. And the important thing is that the, the, the building control backend can, can locate on the, on the premises or cloud. So there is no prerequisite assumption that where the, where the backend solutions and backends will be located. Then uh, uh, key benefits for the building application. So continuing about this previous slide picture that, uh, that uh, there could be a, a multiple backends connected on the building, building area. 
the the solution what we have on the on the deck standard on this one is is basically that there is a, a endpoint uh, scheme uh, developed on the standard which is which is enabling that each of the manufacturer can actually uh, reserve a, a specific endpoint number for their purposes and that is ensuring that they can also make make their maintenance and, and dedicated uh, messages which is intended for for the for the equipment control they can operate in the same same similar network with other 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 equipments and this is offering a probably a, a, a interesting uh, new services that you can actually offer or a, a, on the same network as a, a maintenance services of the of the technologies and, and services on that building and if this is not a, a suitable for the for the building building deployment and, and control point of view of course the system is designed for for state-of-art shared spectrum operations so everybody can build a separate network on the same premises and and it's designed that you can it, it, it they can coexist on the same same premises. Again, the the automatic network formation is is, is resulting a, a minimum maintenance for the for the system, and and depending how the how the how the environment is changing, more equipments are installed during the during the life cycle of the, of the building. The the devices can change their role for from 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 routing to non routing depending on how, how the how the network is, is is on given time is is looking like we can we can use the again this this spectrum on 1.9 gigahertz we can have a have a have a multiple gateways which are supporting supporting large systems and actually is then then acting as a managing managing capacity needs if if the if the signaling and and and, and communication is is varying during the lifetime of, of the system the robot com communication we already handled that on the on the state of art uh, radio interface and, and and the features what we have there and of course the data rates are adaptive and 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 thanks to the adaptive modulation and coding what we, we we support on the on the standards and with this i will i will pass the the next next slides to christian yeah, thanks, you see. Uh, I will continue with uh, industrial IoT as the third application area or use case we talk about today. And, and we see overall that uh, in, in industrial IoT, you see mentioned for utility metering, it's been a fairly successful market with a lot of rollout and you can argue kind of mature in terms of IoT. But if you look at the rest of the industrial market, IoT is just in the in the beginning phase and there's a massive need for that to do cost savings which is estimated to be trillions of dollars if you look at factories alone but also to to be more efficient uh, to have much more monitoring today which is very limited in manufacturing both for production efficiency for failure for security for human security but also for environmental reasons uh, and to continue to optimize deeper and maybe we see worse fragmented supply chain and we have seen for a while and to do more predictive maintenance on systems so that you don't actually maintain systems when they break but you can monitor real time very very detailed part of systems and maintain them before they break and when we talk to players in this industry today we see solutions that tend to be limited and costly um, wired communication is already very limited in uh, in industrial and if you look at wired communication which of course is the standard thing to use in most industry today it has limited reach installed and high maintenance costs if you look at typical so-called industrial iot stuff today it's wired communication into switching centrals or, or wired gateways then you develop this at some point there is actually no more ethernet connections or whatever you use in those gateways so you need to spend ten to thousand dollars to install something else and to expand and that can even happen during install phase, uh, talking to companies that are not able to fully foresee how they would like to scale. Um, these also tend to be more proprietary or custom solutions. And they cannot scale to very, very dense networks that you would need industrial in the future because the scaling factor is simply doesn't exist. And wireless is not really widespread in industrial either because uh, up to today you have been you have to rely on fairly congested low data rate ISM bands in some gigahertz range uh, that have very low data rates and can't support very high scalability. 
you have very, very challenging radio environments here. Of course, you have a lot of metal reflections, multi-part, you have moving objects, you have a lot of things that inherently is very, very bad for wireless radios and wireless communication. And so far, it hasn't really been open available standards that can be for anyone to use to deploy in this. And this means that you end up with a very fragmented system today with limited deployments of IoT and industrial uh, solutions that tend to be made per factory or for limited amount of use. And because wireless in many aspects seems to be fragmented, if you look at the regulatory landscape for some of this standard, it's hard to create specialized product that can be used globally. And you know that in industrial, a lot of product can argue be very, very niche product. So it's a benefit to be able to sell it globally because then you have a bigger market for niche products. And what NR Plus can help here and how can NR Plus help for industrial IoT? So first of all, I'd like to highlight that we have very ultra reliable operation built into the physical layer. You have, a just, you have access to a spectrum, which is not that busy compared to especially sub gigahertz band today. Uh, you have the first non-cellular radio that can use dynamic output power. So meaning each device can actually use no more output power than it need to avoid creating interference. And also all radios can switch to find the lowest interference channels, which is very, very efficient for spectrum utilizations. And then you have a lot of technical stuff that I will not talk about today. We will cover it in later webinars, but features that have been used in cellular for decades and, and use cellular and proven to be to making cellular the most reliable infrastructure that exists that you now have access to in a non-licensed and open standard. And then if you look at each node in a network using that on a plus, uh, it's possible to build both local networks private network with high security. You can transfer data both over IP or non-IP protocols because the standard is open and allow for both IP and non-IP to be used. But you can also build systems that are open and connect directly to cloud and internet using standard IP protocols, standard security protocols. And uh, you have enough bandwidth in your network to run things like TLS and DTLS, which is also established in internet today and use that to create systems that have down to each leaf node, internet, internet connectivity with IP and high security, standardized security. And then you have this very high level of dynamic adaption and the possibility for mesh routing that you see talked about. And that means that in an industrial environment, which is very challenging, perhaps even changing due to the equipment there, uh, each device can actually scan and track and have different routes down to its sync node or its gateway. You can also allow multiple gateways or sync in each network, meaning that you can build mesh network, not necessarily to have huge number of devices or very long range in your system, but you can build very high reliability with redundancy in your network. And you have this broadcast and multicast features so that you can allow for more efficient spectrum usage than many other radio standards today. Another thing I want to focus on a little bit on industrial IoT is uh, the possibility to also build reliable star networks. Star networks is heavily used very, in very traditional industrial. The benefit of that is uh, it's very optimized, of course, if you want to achieve the most consistent and lowest latency performance in a network compared to meshing where you add latency depending on routing. And you have a very simple deployment model where you can actually put fairly modest requirements on each edge node or each leaf node. And when you look at Tectana Plus in a star network topology, you can, you can allow for one millisecond latency from devices down to sync, which allows for even this to be as good as wireless communication today if you look at latency for control. Um, also, the sync that sits in the center of a star network can also control channel time and time utilization and network utilization on different devices. So it's actually possible to prioritize certain traffic in these networks. So if you have certain devices that need very low latency or guaranteed latency or guaranteed bandwidth, you can prioritize that in your network versus maybe sensing, sensing devices that need to be there to send data whenever spectrum is available. And also even in star network or industrial, you can allow for multiple link options for message to be sent if they are lost. 
but you can so that you can allow things to be sent from one leaf to another leaf and back to sync if that have to be happen because you are losing connectivity. And you can imagine star network where you actually have what we call multiple star option where there's multiple syncs in the network and that devices can address that a packet should go out on the internet without actually having to address which exact sync it need to go to. And that means that each device can actually scan and track alternative syncs in the network, only saying that this device needs to go out of the network to the internet and then send with the lowest cost option, meaning finding spectrum with least interference or where it need to use the least output power to send this data. So all in all, that means that for industrial IoT, it's not only about creating mesh networks for very high availability, you can also think about building traditional star networks to achieve still very, very good level of reliability in your network that allow on systems that use puts very low requirement on each node in the network. And with that, I'll hand it over to Andreas, who will continue on some different application areas. Yeah, thank you very much, Christian. So I will talk now about professional audio and I will provide you a very brief overview on use cases. Then I will talk about where DEC technology is already used for audio today. And then I will talk about the benefits of DEC Ana Plus for audio. And in order to give you also some technical things, uh, just as food for thought, I decided to give you a reference example based on today's technology and show how you can benefit now from DEC Ana Plus if everything is working fine. So professional audio. So it's the world of live music events, festivals, congresses. Yeah, so everywhere where music needs to be played and recorded. It's everywhere where people speak yeah, and uh, where people actually make a professional performance on a concert. Yeah, so Adele, Ed Sheeran, all are using wireless microphones and in your monitoring systems. Wireless microphones is obviously where the singer is uh, singing into and this is then transferred to a receiver and there then to a mixing desk. And in your monitoring, just to explain it quite easily, it's more or less a hearing aid uh, for the artist and I will explain it a little bit deeper uh, on a later slide. Then we have this fascinating world of audio for video which is a truly mobile application, uh, which of course needs to be independent of any infrastructure in order to ensure that everywhere, anytime, and by anyone a recording can happen. And then there's this additional world of business communication where the latency requirements are not so tough. Uh, which is used basically in conferencing, in, in the educational sector, so in universities and schools, where ease of use is in focus. So where is the DECT technology, so the classic DECT technology used today already for audio? So it is used in audio for video. Yeah, it's used in the education sector and the conferencing and of course, in cordless headsets, especially in um, call centers, you have a very, very high connection density and only X technology is able to serve it really when you have a very, very dense deployment. Um, besides that, there's also talkback functionalities at live events, which is uh, used in the pro professional sector for team communication. So what are the benefits of DECT ANA Plus just from an audio industry perspective? So there's a very modern physical layer in DECT ANA Plus uh, involved, which allows the use even in very complex environments and in large halls. So it can handle very large delay spreads. It is an IMT 2020 technology, which is no longer restricted to the deck band. It has a built-in support for reliable spectrum sharing, 
So the topic is not just how many devices per square kilometer you can deploy, it's actually also how many networks you can deploy per square kilometer. Then we have a scalability and flexibility of the Fire Mac engine, which allows us to really make it tailor made for the use case we want to address. It delivers ease of use, including the automatic interference handling. We very much liked in our portfolio already uh, from the classic deck systems. We have the support of various network topologies. So the poor cable replacement is supported. The star topology is supported. The mesh topology is supported, which is actually of interest for tour guide like applications. So basically you can have what we would call the mobile mobile infrastructure. So infrastructure, which is moving around together with the people. It allows an anywhere at any time by anyone use, demand driven by the user. And we have a shipset based solution which allows for economic uh, scalability while still providing the freedom to innovate. And besides that, you see basically a picture which I also want to make very clear. Uh, so Deck Ender Plus delivers basically a foundation. Yeah, a building block, yeah, which consists of, of a convergence layer also, including end-to-end -end security, the data link control, the Mac layer, and the physical layer. And we, as Sennheiser or other manufacturers from the audio world, can basically stack on it whatever we would like to have for our applications, because we span our own ecosystems. I have the pleasure to be the consortium lead of a Franco-German innovation project on private 5G networks for the industry. It's called Merci, Media and Event Production via Resilient Communication on IoT Infrastructure. So we are looking how DECT 2020NR, yeah, so this is the name in the Etsy world, so DECT NR plus is the marketing name, name by DECT Forum for the technology, can complement existing private 5G networks based on 3GPP technology. Um, we are looking for a cooperative integration of the media and event sector with the industrial IoT sector, as we know that both application areas have very, very similar interests and needs in use and standardization and actually also in regulation. Uh, main target is to have application-driven evaluations and demonstrations in end-to-end -end use cases to have ready-to-go interworking interfacing solution for integration of DEC 2020 new radio into existing industry ecosystems. So we are not trying to replace any ecosystem which is already existing. We integrate ourselves with the technology into it. And of course, the topic of spectrum access and uh, spectrum sharing frameworks. And uh, I just want to note that we have co-founding by the German ministries of uh, economics and um, climate um, protection and the French ministry for economics. And you see the partner logos listed, um, which are involved. I now want to talk a little bit about uh, something which is quite unique in the professional audio world. Uh, compared to others. So we have basically an artist which is speaking in a wireless microphone and is using a wireless in-ear monitor in order to perform. So we have actually source and sync of audio in one person. The sound is traveling actually directly via the bone and the body and indirectly via room reflections so that you require isolating headphones in order to not confuse basically the artist. And we need to have a jitter-free turnaround streaming latency of below four milliseconds on application layer. So from mouse to ear. Because the artist is source and sync in once. Yeah? And the latency budget of wireless microphone, mixing desk, and the IM, IM transmitter is actually shared. This is why we are heavily interested to bring down latency. And now I take a current Sennheiser product. It's a Sennheiser Evolution DX. 
it's not based on DECT, to make this very clear. It's based on a Sennheiser technology, which is actually a single carrier transmission. So I focus here on the codec data rate. So this is actually what is going over air. So we have something around 190 kilobits per second. And we have a system latency capsule to the receiver output of 1.9 milliseconds. So actually, when you have five transmitters, you also need five transmitter uh, receivers. So you always have a transmitter receiver pair. An important metric for us is always how many audio channels per megahertz you can deploy. And therefore, the systems have a standard mode, which is uh, providing good robustness also uh, in very, very uh, dense environments. And then we have a link density mode, which basically uh, accepts some risk of uh, failure in operation. And when you deploy five wireless microphones in the standard mode, you occupy three megahertz. When you occupy the whole thing in the link density mode, you are occupying 1.5 megahertz. By the way, the control plane is realized via Bluetooth. It's not directly embedded to the technology. Uh, and this has something to do uh, that we actually don't have enough space in 200 kilohertz to serve user plane and control plane data in parallel, except some battery telegrams. So would it be possible to realize a microphone system with DECT NR plus yeah, in scheduled access, which is a specific mode of DECT NR plus with five wireless microphones and uh, now to embed basically uh, also the control channel? And the answer is quite simple. Um, we have a flexibility on the physical layer and MAC, which allows us to deliver 1.5 milliseconds streaming latency when we are using a bandwidth of 3.5 megahertz, more or less, and uh, 3 milliseconds if we are using a bandwidth of uh, 1.8 megahertz, more or less. And for those two modes, I'm actually getting regarding spectral efficiency more or less in the similar order. And as you can see, the uh, physical layer data rates are also somewhere in the order. I have some uh, control signaling overhead by DECT NR plus, which would actually reduce this data rates. But it looks everything fine. I do not address here topics like uh, receiver blocking scenarios or energy efficiency of the technology. Actually, our devices are battery driven. Yeah? So it's a very important topic for the audio industry, how energy efficient a standard actually also is. And would it be possible to realize a microphone and an in-ear monitoring system as well in this system? And also there the answer is yes. I can make a different uh, allocation of uh, uplink and downlink so that I can serve three microphones and three in-ear monitors and the control information and actually the speckle efficiency is then going up. And here I can have a round trip latency in the order of four milliseconds, which would be as there is plus processing involved, um, hardly at the border, but when I would double the bandwidth, I'm getting in an order of uh, two milliseconds plus processing, which is already getting quite interesting for us. And uh, as you can see here again, the data rates are in the order which would be of interest for us uh, so that we can, for example, also instead of using a 16 QAM code rate one over two, going to a QPSK code rate one over two, allowing an extended range. With that, I thank you for listening. And then I hand it back to Ruhl. Thank you, Andreas and Christian and Yussi for your presentations. And before we go to the questions, I'd just like to say again that we'll have further webinars in the, uh, the autumn to, uh, to deal with all the technical aspects of the technology. And then later on in the year, we will have a webinar focused on how you can get started with this new technology. And we'll finish it off with a, a recap and, and panel discussion session in December.
Then we uh, hope you enjoyed this webinar. And if you want to be part of shaping the MR Plus journey, then you can join us at the DEC Forum. Information about membership you can find on our website. But if you have any questions about membership or otherwise, then feel free to contact me at any time. So with that, then we go to the uh, questions. I take them from the top here. We have the first question, which is, uh, for smart grid, how well suited is NR Plus for monitoring long linear assets like transmission lines? What density of routing nodes would you recommend for reliable communication? And I suspect that UC may be able to say something about this. Well, I I, I, I will say something, but that 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 is probably a a challenging question to uh, give a, a exact numbers on on this one, but. Uh... But what we know from the from the field test from the NR plus capability is that uh, that the in in the in the line of sight of communications we can we can reach uh, kilometer or kilometers distances between the between the transmitter and, and and receiver. So that basically what I'm saying is that depending on the on the radio conditions. So if you have a have a high frequency or well, let's say high high voltage transmission lines i assume that they are located fairly high on the from from the ground the the, the likelihood that you would have a, have a kilometer so so trans, uh, communication distances is very pro probable but of course not knowing where where these these lines are it's, it's impossible to to give you a, a very exact number and that is then then basically gives you a the first very brief understanding that what is the the density of the routing nodes on, on this type of instances basically what i'm saying is that we are talking about that on, on the on the kilometers uh, distance for from router to router on, on this case but i won't recommend any any numbers at this point of time but this is this is the uh, live test what uh, and, and i want understanding that what are the linked and link distances on the on, on this type of environment Thank you. You see, we go to the second question, uh, which is, as far as you know, is the 1.9 gigahertz spectrum free and usable in all CE countries? Um, and that's a fairly simple question. And yet that's the case. So it's, it, the spectrum is license free and usable in all CE countries and many more countries. And on the DEC Forum website, you will find a map uh, with all the countries where tech is uh, uh, approved. Then we have a question about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity wise, how is it managed? Um, well, you see, you want to take that again, or? Well, I can I can start, but uh, then my recommendation is that that, that uh, the who 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 was asking this is then then following on our ne next technical presentations where we are diving in on, on, on the security uh, solutions what we have on our standards but but what i can say from from now is that we have a we have a two level uh, security algorithms based on the based on the as 128 and and then the mic mic protection for the for the messages so first level is is the link level uh, communication which is which is ciphered by by these algorithms and then also we have an end-to-end uh, security solution, as, as also Andreas was showing on his on his material. So both are both are uh, supported on the on the radio stack level. Then the question, as an example for the for the smart metering case, is that of course then the, on the application level, smart metering, DLM, SCOSM application software is is having having its own solutions that how the how the security is is maintained. And the idea, what we have, is that of course that is the the, the solution from the application level. Then that, that that how the how the encryption and and keys are managed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Then we have a question uh, for IoT application consumption is a key point. Roughly, what is the consumption compared to LTE M NB IoT LoRa? Uh, question mark. I. Yes, Christian, you'll be able to say something about this. Yeah, yeah I can say something about that. But as, as for range, uh, for power consumption as well, it's hard to kind of give exact numbers. But but what we can say about inherently about Plus, I think there are two things that we should we should focus on around that is that 
this is a radio technology where you can where the radio itself can dynamically switch uh, go from minus 40 dBm to plus dBm of the power. So as you understand, there's a massive range in how much of the power you actually use to transmit data. And this is, of course, in wireless system saying a lot about how power, how much power consumption you have. If you compare it to a LoRa radio or a cellular radio, you have the same thing that if you use little, if you have to, if you can live with live, live with little small output power, you will have much lower peak current than if you have to use high output power to achieve high range or, or penetration. So that is similar. The other thing that Decathlon Plus is that it has high, very high pro programmable sleep and peaking times for each devices. So it's very highly programmable how long devices have to sleep. So if you want to build a low power system and you choose a low power you know, radio architecture, a low power device like we in Nordic are building, then you can put these devices to sleep for extensive times and then wake up to send very limited amount of data. The third thing maybe to mention is that because you have access to fairly high bandwidth and, and spectrum, you can have very efficient transmission of data. So if you look at a use case where you sleep for longer time and accumulate data over a sensor, you will be able to transmit all that data securely over a link much, much more efficient than with a LoRa radio, for example, that utilizes very, very low bandwidth and try and use that to save power. Okay, thank you, Gracia. Next question, is it possible to have TCP IP connections in mesh topology? I mean, then we're back to UC. Yes, the answer is yes. And, and we, we support the, the uh, segmentation and, and our all needed, needed uh, functionality for the IPv6 transport. And again, the, the, we will explain these in details on the, on the next sessions on the, on the, with the higher layers, layer two and, and, and higher layers technologies will be, will be presented. So I, I recommend it, the person who was asking this, that uh, joining on that, that, that session and, and more detailed uh, explanation will be provided. Okay, thank you. Then the next question is, what are the bandwidths and range that will be possible with the Decathlon R Plus modules in the near future? Who would be able to answer that question? I guess all three of you could. But yeah, I can, um, maybe I can start a little bit and say what we, what we in Nordic are working on, which you can also go and find out by looking at some earlier webinars. That our first solution for Nordic will use uh, 1.9 megahertz bandwidth to achieve roughly three and a half megabit of communication bandwidth on Mac level in the devices. But as a standard itself, this is really, really still on the lower end. Uh, you can go to two gigabits per second if you use higher bandwidth. Uh, if there are hardware coming later from Nordic or others that also want to go and do higher end systems. Okay, thank you. Then we have the next question is how is interference and coexistence handled between multiple co-located networks, maybe from two users? Maybe I start and then, then you, you others are, are, are complementing. So this is exactly the, 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 the thing what we have been spending quite time in, in, in defining the standard itself. And, and the one of the key key features what we have here is that, that of course we have a LBT or, or let's say spectrum monitoring uh, so that we can understand that who else is actually using the shared spectrum resources, and that is the first level of of of, uh, of operation so that we are we are sensing the spectrum and understanding whether there is somebody using the same frequency. And it's important to understand that that the system design is done such that that this is a local decision on the on the, on the device level. So they they have the best understanding that what is actually ongoing on the neighborhood. The second, which is which is a unique feature, what we have in in Deck Dynal Plus is that the physical layer control channel is is actually having information which which also uh, other users which are not belonging on that network can decode. And that physical uh, layer control, control information contains information which is actually telling that this and that that transmission is actually going to last uh, this amount of slots in, 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 in the future. And that is, that is uh, providing information for the, for the 
other users that actually the activity what the other users are having on this frequency is this and that and and giving them an opportunity to synchronize and, and think about that is this a is this a frequency and time slots i can operate and this is this is truly a unique uh, feature i haven't in my career seen in any in, in other systems so far and this is something that that um, enables that there can be a uh, a multiple networks coexisting on the same same environment and and, and sharing the space. Okay, thank you very much. Then we have the uh, question eight is under the pro audio application, the cable replacement topology was mentioned. Can you elaborate a bit more on this topology? Is it just a star topology with a single node? I guess that goes to Andreas. Yeah, so, so actually you have um, a transmitter and a receiver, yeah, and uh, you are replacing, they're simply a cable, yeah. This would be unidirectional. Decliner Plus allows you to have a bidirectional use of a cable, but actually you are quite right, yeah. So you take uh, what uh, you see called PT and you take an FT, yeah, so it's basically just. Uh, one link of a star, if you want. Yeah, and it's easy to uh, then extend the single links and also to uh, a system which uh, basically have uh, multiple source points or multiple sync nodes. I hope this answers the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And then we have uh, the last question for today is how does Dectana Plus compare with Bluetooth uh, low energy audio for low latency applications? And I think that question goes to Christian. Yeah, I must say right away, I'm not an expert on, uh, on low energy audio, but uh, you can look at latency there being tens of milliseconds, basically. And then uh, as uh, Andreas explained uh, when you go to Dectana Plus, you will be able to achieve a sub four millisecond latency end to end in a full system. And you can achieve sub one millisecond latency actually between devices in Dectana Plus. So Dectana Plus is more optimized for very, very low latency use cases, while Bluetooth Low Energy is very, very optimized for you know, should you latencies that are more in the tens of millisecond range. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the, yeah, the speakers today for your presentations and answering the questions. And uh, also a big thank you to all the people uh, who joined us today for this webinar. And uh, we look forward, of course, to seeing you again in the autumn and when we talk more about the technology. So thanks again to everyone and have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>